For today's video, we are going to take a look at the long run aggregate supply and aggregate demand model. Now what we're looking at in this slide is the long run aggregate supply and aggregate demand model in equilibrium. What I've chosen to do here is to give you an opportunity to look at two very common scenarios with respect to this model. The scenarios include a recessionary condition and an inflationary condition, which will create what are called recessionary and inflationary gaps. There are many nuances regarding this particular model, and sometimes it gives students a little bit of trouble. But if you look at this carefully and compare it to some of the logic that we have used before, it's not too bad. Okay, first of all, remember that on this graph we have three curves. We have a perfectly inelastic long run aggregate supply curve. It's inelastic because at any given time the resources necessary to produce in a nation's economy are fixed. Additionally, this particular curve will shift, but in order to make it shift we need long term permanent conditions that will improve the economy. In another video I compared this to the Sydney Lanier Bridge in Brunswick, Georgia. It was a massive undertaking which took over seven years to complete, but will have long-run implications to the ability to produce in Glynn County. All right, so again, the long-run aggregate supply curve represents essentially what the PPF represents to us in another graph. Then we have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve, which represents all of the spending done by consumers, businesses, government, and foreigners on American-made products, or whatever country you're analyzing. We also have a short run aggregate supply curve, which represents the ability to produce and conditions that might affect the ability to produce only in a short run period. Okay, so let's take a look at recessionary gap first. So if the aggregate demand curve is comprised of the C, the I, the G, and the NX, so what might cause a recession? A recession is generally a result of a reduction in demand by one of these components. So it might be that consumers are buying less or businesses aren't expanding on plant and equipment or maybe foreigners aren't buying American products like they once did. One way or the other, we know that the logic of supply and demand is such that if there is a reduction in demand, in this case in the aggregate or total U.S. economy, our demand curve will shift to the left. Now let's look at the implications of what happens to prices and overall GDP in the economy. As we shift to the left in aggregate demand, we can see that we are no longer at the equilibrium point A. Our new equilibrium is at point B and is showing us that there has been a reduction in prices. I mean, think about it. During a recession, generally speaking, that's what happens. Prices go down because business aren't selling their products. And if they want to sell those products, they kind of have to lower the price. Okay, so prices went down. Now, what happens to overall output? Well, this equilibrium point also shows us that we are now underperforming or we are performing at a point that is not desirable. In other words, our total output has fallen relative to what we are capable of doing. Again, we're in a recession. So if this represented a fully employed economy of 5 to 6% unemployment, then what has happened here is GDP is falling as we are producing less things during this recession and subsequently unemployment rate is actually going up. So as our real GDP falls, the unemployment rate generally increases. Okay, let's move to the right graph here. And we're going to look at an inflationary gap. So essentially, it's the opposite scenario for an inflationary gap. If a recession is caused by a reduction in demand, inflation is caused by an increase in demand. And again, we're looking at the aggregate here, the total of all demand represented by consumers, businesses, government, and foreigners. So now consumers are increasing their consumption, maybe of interest sensitive spending products such as like houses and cars and big ticket items, appliances and TVs. Businesses are investing in plant and equipment, governments increasing their spending, and maybe foreigners are interested in buying American products more so than they were before. Either way, with this increase in demand, we have a shift to the right of the demand curve. What this essentially creates is what we call demand pull inflation. So now we can see that obviously we're not at point A anymore. We're at a higher price point, which again makes sense. If there's more demand for a product, that product is going to go up in price. In this case, it's all products in the U.S. economy. So 
our price level increases at point B, that's inflation, demand pull, and our output increases in the short run. So again, we see higher prices, increased output, and interestingly, if this was a 5% unemployment rate or 5 to 6, we've actually increased our ability to produce in the short run, causing unemployment to fall at an abnormal rate. So there's another step to this, but we won't be going over it in this video. This is just simply to show you how these things occur. A third condition that you might see relative to the long-run aggregate supply and aggregate demand model is a scenario called stagflation. Okay, so stagflation combines two words, stagnant and inflation. Effectively, the economy is in a contractionary environment. Additionally, prices are going up. So it's kind of like you lost your job and everything's more expensive. It's a dreaded scenario. Okay, so what happens when we have stagflation? Well, there's some scenario that occurred that affected our ability to produce in the short run. And as a result, prices went up and our unemployment rate also went up. So supply shocks on this graph, if they are short run, are represented by a shift to the left of the supply curve. So supply shocks are illustrated on this graph as a shift to the left of the short run aggregate supply curve. Now you can see again that we're not at point A anymore, but at point B, we can see that prices have gone up. So we have a combination here of a reduction in output with increased prices. If long run equilibrium is at 5%, if long run equilibrium is at 5 to 6%, well now we have a reduction in output and an increase in unemployment. So again, stagflation is represented by higher prices as well as reduced output and increased unemployment. That is a dreaded scenario. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll be talking more. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and the three different scenarios that you might Encounter with the long run aggregate supply and aggregate demand model.